Our first lesson comes from the book of Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, verses 4 through 12. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we are accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has lain on him, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offering and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Here ends our first lesson. Our gospel lesson is according to St. Mark the 10th chapter, verses 35 through 45. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and asked him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. The title of our message for this week is Servant Leaders. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. So Friday afternoon, I visited our two eldest members and brought the Sacrament of Holy Communion to them. Uh, Marian Nelson in East Providence. And then I left her home, drove around the block on my way to see Ernie Anderson at the Veterans Home in Bristol. But I only got a block away and my car was making a terrible noise, which surprised me since I had just had it all, you know, the maintenance uh, all up to date the night before. <laughs> um, I had just picked it up from the shop. So it's making a terrible noise, so I pull over and I get out and I have a flat tire on my front uh, passenger side tire. I'm standing there like lamenting because now I'm gonna be late to visit 
Ernie, who's 96, um, and families were walking by with all these children because there's an elementary school right down the street in East Providence. And so this lovely young family walked by a dad and, and, uh, and mom and their two little, cute little blonde girls. And um, suddenly the dad says to his daughters, okay girls, why don't we stop here and help this nice lady? And he said to me, do you have a spare tire? And although I had never used it, I did. And of course, I also have a broken arm. So he um, saw my, my brace and um, said, we've got to help this nice lady. And his little girls helped out. It was really, really beautiful um, to, and such a surprise to have this young man just stop on his way home and the wife sat down and the little girls helped and and it was lovely so I want to thank Ryan and Jenny the parents for being such great parents and their little girls Sabrina and Violet um, who were such good helpers um, at the end, of course, I wanted to give him something and he refused any any money. I wanted to give him a little. And so finally I said, well, to the girls, I said, why don't you take mommy and daddy out for ice cream? And I gave them each a little something. Um, but what a perfect example of a servant leader was this young dad, Ryan, who stopped to help a total stranger um, in the middle of his busy day, sacrificing his time. Um, it was a hot day. He was sweating after he, you know, got my tire, my spare tire on and just gave of himself, of his time, um, sacrificed time with his family, but also what a um, lasting impression I'm sure he had on his two daughters who now have an example of being servant leaders. In today's gospel, um, Jesus tells us that like him, we are to be servant leaders. And it's really important when we look at today's gospel to look at the context that it comes to us through. Because the passage that came right before today's gospel is this, from Mark 10. They were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way, and the disciples were astonished while those who were um, who followed were afraid. Again, he took the twelve aside and told them what was going to happen to him. We're going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him, and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. That's what comes right before today's text. Then comes today's story. Then James and John, sons of Zebedee, came to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And he says, What is it you want me to do for you? Um, Jesus says that a lot to people. He says that to people who are blind, to people who cannot walk, to people who cannot hear or speak. And they usually say, I want to see, I want to hear, I want to be able to walk. Those, those things that are of crucial importance. But James and John, two of his closest disciples, instead answer, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. So here Jesus is talking about how he's on his way to be tortured and 
killed and they're thinking about being in positions of power, uh, one on his right and one on his left. It, it's even more shocking that they were talking about such a thing right after Jesus was speaking of his impending suffering, sacrifice on the cross, and death. Jesus comes back, of course, um, and says, are you able to drink the cup I am to drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am to be baptized? And they say, oh, yes, we are able. And he tells them, oh, you will drink from the cup I'm drinking. They also were martyred. And you will be baptized with the baptism um, but to grant for one of you to sit at my right or my left is not mine to grant. It's for those for whom it has been prepared. And then the other disciples get very upset with James and John. They, they get indignant, as I would too if I were one of them. But Jesus says, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus um, saw himself as a servant who was willing to suffer and sacrifice his life for the sake of others, for this world he so loved, for you. For me. And in doing that, he was um, part of, as a Jewish rabbi, he was part of this Jewish tradition that we see in the Hebrew Bible, especially in today's first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Um, in Isaiah, um, it speaks of the these passages about um, a suffering servant who will give his life as a ransom for many. And Bible scholars um, say that this could be taken in a couple of different ways. It can be taken, one, as the prophet himself, Isaiah, speaking about um, the, the difficult life of a prophet um, in terms of sacrificing of himself and serving others. But also, um, a second way it can be taken is that the people of Israel as a community are to give of themselves, sacrifice of themselves for the sake of others. And then finally, um, it can be taken in terms of this coming Messiah um, that the, the Jewish people were waiting for, that this coming Messiah would be the suffering servant. And for those of us who are Christians, of course, that is how we interpret it. And in fact, we um, read these passages from Isaiah that we read today, that you heard read today, um, during Holy Week, and especially even um, on Good Friday, during our Good Friday walk and we see Jesus as fulfilling these passages of the suffering servant. But today Jesus in the gospel invites all of us to follow his example of servant leadership. And this is so completely countercultural. If you ask uh, people in today's world, what is it, you know, what is your goal in life? I, I doubt many of them would say to be a servant. Mm -hmm. And yet, um, that is the example Jesus gives us 
to a, a model of leaders who are servants, servant leadership. Um, now, do any of us serve, suffer, and sacrifice um, willingly? Think about it. I would say we do. Um, today, in the life of our church at First Lutheran, we're baptizing a beautiful little baby girl, Taylor Jane. And if I asked her parents, um, are you willing to serve this child and, and put her first uh, before yourselves? Without a blink of an eye, they would say, absolutely, that's what we've been doing. If I um, ask the parents, are you willing to, you know, have you suffered at all because of this child? I'm sure her mother would say, yes, well, childbirth was certainly um, an example, an experience of suffering. And I'm sure her father also would say it was difficult to watch his wife go through that to birth this child. And then both of them with all those sleepless nights and, you know, giving of themselves, sacrificing of themselves for the sake of their child. And parents do that willingly all the time. Why? For love. Because of love. When we truly do love another more than we love ourselves, we are willing to serve them and suffer even for them and sacrifice of ourselves for them. Um, I remember um, years ago, we had a treasurer here at First Lutheran named Michelle Abbott. And um, she had been a CPA and she volunteered her services and we were so blessed. She was very skilled as a treasurer. And um, I remember her saying one time that at her previous church in Minnesota, where she was from, the pastor had talked about um, giving financially to the church and to various um, organizations that help people in need. And he talked about giving of our finances, giving sacrificially. And uh, she said she'd never thought about that before. She had always given generously but never to the point of like really feeling it like it was like it was it was difficult to give it was a it really was asking a sacrifice and i'll never forget she said to me i don't think we ask enough of people i think most people are willing to sacrifice for something they feel strongly about but we just don't usually ask that of people. I think a third example is people who serve in the military, um, who willingly serve, suffer, and sacrifice to the ultimate degree for the sake of others. That's an incredible modern day example. And finally, um, I'm reminded of a, a talk I heard some time ago by a Baptist minister and quite famous um, speaker, uh, Tony Campolo, who said, um, who has devoted a lot of his ministry to working with youth, with young people. And he said he got up at a college university uh, where, where students were graduating and he, he talked to them and he said, I have some applications down here. When, after you graduate, he said, it's to be part of this youth service corps. And he said, you know, it'll 
I think they asked them to serve for a year, I think it was, and he said, the money's terrible, it'll be the hardest year of your life. You will sacrifice more of yourself than you've ever sacrificed before. Um, but if you're interested, let me know. Here's some applications. That was the end of his speech. Do you know he ran out of applications? Because so many young people felt that they wanted, they really wanted to do something uh, courageous and heroic and something bigger than, than we are. They wanted to give of themselves for the sake of others. So sisters and brothers, this day we are all invited by Jesus who came not to be served, but to serve. And we are all invited to follow his example, being servant leaders. Just as that beautiful young man, Ryan, served me this day with my flat tire and modeled for his two lovely young daughters, Sabrina and Violet, a beautiful example of servant leadership. God bless them. Amen. Will you let me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. Will you let me be your servant, let me be as Christ to you? Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Lift by the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our captain
And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve God and the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.